the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones Season 8 video. Today I want to discuss what is easily one of the biggest theories in the Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire community. The theory I am referring to is, of course, who is Azor Ahai? Now, for those of you who have been a subscriber of mine for a long time already know this is a theory I have discussed in many videos already. In fact, I think almost every Game of Thrones YouTuber has made several videos on this theory alone. The reason why I decided to talk about this again is because I recently saw an article online that wanted to answer the same thing. Now, as you all know, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this theory because Game of Thrones ended up heading in a completely different direction during their final season. You see, most of us either assumed it would be Jon Snow who killed the Night King, or Daenerys Targaryen who would kill the Night King, but the showrunners decided to throw us a curveball by having Arya Stark deliver that fatal blow. This was one of those big moments from the final season that shattered the online fanbase. Not only were millions of fans upset, but apparently so was Kit Harington, the actor who portrayed none other than Jon Snow. Let's go ahead and see what he had to say about that major event. Kit Harington was a bit pissed off he didn't get to kill the Game of Thrones Night King. It has been a few months since Game of Thrones officially exited our lives, and getting over that breakup has been pretty traumatic. Some fans were happy with the way it all ended, while others petitioned that the final season be redone entirely. Either way, you gotta hand it to the show's biggest moments, like how the Night King was eventually felled. If you're all caught up, you likely remember that it was none other than Arya Stark, Maisie Williams, who ended up taking the Night King out for good. What's more, Bran Stark, Isaac Hempstead Wright, ended up as king, if you can believe that. Long story. It likely came as a shock that old Jon Snow, Kit Harington, wasn't the one to plunge the blade in the Night King instead. And for fans a little annoyed that it didn't happen, well, so is Kit. He said, I was a bit pissed off, only because I wanted to kill the Night King. He divulged to the Hollywood Reporter about Arya's Night King eradication in the series' final season. I think I felt like everyone did, in that it had been set up for a long time, and then I didn't get to do it. But I was so happy for Maisie and Arya. I was secretly like, I wanted to do that, Harrington said. But it was really a great twist, and it tied up Maisie's journey in a really beautiful way. Over the seasons, we've seen her build up these skills to become this hardened assassin, and she uses it all to kill our main antagonist. All's well that ends well. And you had to know our little Arya needed an outlet for all that pent-up rage. What better than the dastardly Night King? I think as we get further and further away from the final season, we will start to see more actors voice their opinion on how the show ended. We know damn well that at least some of them were a little more than just upset. I did have a feeling that he would be pissed off about not getting to kill the Night King. We thought he did deserve to get that kill because they had built up his character to fight the White Walkers ever since he joined the Night's Watch in Season 1, but imagine how he had to feel considering he had to work all those years setting up those scenes to never get that big payoff with his main adversary. That would have been very disappointing, but let's continue. Ever since that episode aired, there have been many articles written and videos made detailing how Arya Stark was meant to kill the Night King the entire time. Now, I still happen to think the show writers made that up on their own, but until George R. R. Martin releases the next book, everyone is free to their own opinion. Now, I want to go over this article because they believe they know who is meant to be Azor Ahai Reborn in George's books. Let's go ahead and see what they had to say. Jon Snow is Azor Ahai, not Arya or Daenerys. This scene proves it. Game of Thrones hero Jon Snow is Azor Ahai, not Daenerys or even Arya who killed the Night King. This scene proves Melisandre's vision was right after all. The prince who was promised was originally believed by readers to be Jon Snow. Nobody was ever convinced by Melisandre's conviction it could be Stannis Baratheon who would be victorious in Game of Thrones. But then it was pointed out that the gender did not have to mean a man. Suddenly, Daenerys became the prime suspect. Until, of course, Arya shocked the viewers by being the one to dispatch the great evil which threatened the entire world. But, actually, it is still Jon and always was. The Lord of Light showed Melisandre, but she did not understand. Her god brought the Stark and Seeker Targaryen back to life for one clear reason. The books contain numerous prophecies and mentions of this mythical prince who will return at a time of greatest need to turn back the darkness. Daenerys has a vision during a clash of kings in the House of the Undying. She sees her brother Rhaegar with his first wife, Elia Martell, and their new baby son, where Rhaegar names his son Aegon and says, He has a song. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. 
There must be one more. The dragon has three heads. Rhaegar's secret son Jon, of course, was also named Aegon. He is the only character in the entire saga whose blood combines Targaryen and Stark, fire and ice. Was Danny's vision purposefully misleading to keep the truth from her and the readers? Later, in A Dance with Dragons, an increasingly confused Melisandre searches for answers from her god. I pray for a glimpse of Azor High, and where lore shows me only snow. It is easy to misread this and think she is only seeing snow, which would still be a big clue to Jon, but the uppercase indicates the god is actually showing her the man. It is the Lord of Light who gives his priestess the guidance and power to bring Jon back from the dead. Why? What purpose does he still have? Ultimately, he doesn't defeat the Night King. He doesn't even defeat Ramsay Bolton to save the North and restore Winterfell. It did cause a huge fan dismay when it was revealed on the HBO final season that the Night King had rather been a red herring. The threat from beyond the wall was never the central plot or the central danger. It seems that R'hllor and presumably the Old Gods of Westeros had one endgame and Jon was the final tool to ensure it came to pass. The throne and the future of Westeros were always intended for Bran Stark, it seems. The greatest danger turned out to be Daenerys, and it is not just the increasingly horrified Westerosi lords who do not want her on their throne, it is the land itself. Jon was brought back to life and maneuvered to the Dragon Queen's side so he could fulfill his destiny. Danny's death even incorporated the terrible part of the prophecy which needed the prince who was promised to plunge his blade into the heart of his beloved to create the mythical sword Lightbringer. Martin's books, of course, reveal in prophecies but also make it clear they should never be trusted. However, if anyone is Azor High, it is Jon. Okay, so as you can see, they believe it's Jon Snow regardless of what may have happened in the TV show. Like I have said in my own videos, I believe it to be Jon Snow as well. In fact, I have even used the same evidence to support the theory. I do think Melisandre's vision is a good indicator of who Azor High really is, but I can also understand why some would say that's not enough to convince them. Now, there are some other things from the books that lead me to believe it's Jon, but I don't want to go through all that right now. All you would need to do is watch my Melisandre is Nisa Nisa video to see which direction I think the books are heading in. One of the reasons why I wanted to discuss this again is because I am curious to know what some of you may think about this now. Since the show has been off the air for several months, this has given us some time to digest what happened in the final season. Now, that doesn't mean we all accept that version, but there's no changing it, so we're going to have to live with it until the books are released. Now, since we are discussing Arya Stark killing the Night King, there is something else I want to read to you because the director said something very interesting about that scene. Now, when I say interesting, what I really mean is ridiculous, but it's not his fault, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Game of Thrones director shares why we did not see how Arya was able to reach the Night King. When Arya Stark killed the Night King in The Long Night, many Game of Thrones fans were shocked and did not expect her to save Winterfell. Now, Game of Thrones director Miguel Sapochnik is explaining why we did not see how Arya Stark was able to reach the Night King before the big moment. Arya Stark's kill scene during the Long Night episode was a turning point for the Game of Thrones plot. When Bran Stark and the Night King are about to confront each other, Arya Stark suddenly comes out of nowhere and leaps toward the Night King. In the end, we felt it didn't matter how she got there. What mattered was setting up that moment when the Night King catches her mid-leap and we think she's done for. Then she pulls out her knife switch and takes him out, Sapochnik told The Hollywood Reporter in an interview. I loved Maisie's performance post the takedown as well, sharing a moment with her brother, Bran Stark. Sapochnik discussed why he scrapped the scene where Arya Stark would be shown traveling through the Weirwood Forest since it would destroy the timing of the Night King's death. I questioned everything and we worked long and hard to find the right balance of credibility versus wish fulfillment. Then we shot it and reshot it and found that was really important was rhythm, Sapochnik added. At one point, there was an elaborate plan to have her fight her way into the Weirwood Forest, but as we progressed, we realized she'd already done that earlier in the episode, so it felt like a repeat. Even though Game of Thrones received mixed reviews for its last season, the series received 32 Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Drama, Lead Actor in a Drama, and Lead Actress in a Drama. Now, I guess I should not be surprised because once again, the writers had thrown all the logic out the window. Let me read that sentence one more time. They said, in the end, we felt it did not matter how she got there. Wow. You know what? I think I've had enough for one day. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate that. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.